Uh, this is the Comox Air Force Museum, and we're located here at the front gate of 19 Wing Comox. And our mission is to tell the story of Canada's West Coast military aviation history. And of course, naturally, we focus on this base and the squadrons that have flown at this base, but we also include the history of the entire West Coast. One of our unique displays is the Japanese fire balloon. Now this is a weapon that was invented by the Japanese during the Second World War, and it took advantage of their, of their knowledge of meteorology. It was Japanese scientists that had figured out about the jet stream. Now of course today, everybody knows about the jet stream, it's on the Weather Channel. But at the time of the Second World War, the Japanese were the first to figure it out. And they came up with a theory that they proved that you could take a balloon and you could float it from Japan, the jet stream would blow it across, all the way across the Pacific Ocean, and then it would land somewhere in North America and where it would blow up and it would be an attack against North America. A remarkable uh, invention, and over 9,000 of them were launched in total secrecy. The schoolgirls that were sewing together the panels for the balloon had no idea what they were making. And the balloon is filled with gas in Japan, and then it ascends as it will. But of course, if you just let a balloon ascend and ascend, sooner or later, it will just burst. So you have to have a relief valve, and we have a relief valve here in the museum. And it lets the gas out, and then down comes the balloon. When it gets to a certain level, it has little explosive charges that dropped off sandbags. It's lighter again, back up it goes, where it releases more gas. But you only have so much gas, and so you get so many cycles till the gas is used up. Typically, they got about four cycles of up and down in the jet stream as it came across North America. Now, over 9,000 of them were launched, and they got as far east as Detroit and as far south as Dallas. But the vast majority of them ended up in Canada's west coast and the United States Northwest, Washington State, and Oregon. The theory was that they would land in North America and cause a fire, burn a city, whatever. But the truth is, North America, even now, is largely empty. And they did very, very little damage. And the only people that were ever hurt by these were people who came upon them inadvertently and set them off. And these were innocent civilians. The, uh, the, it's interesting that this weapon um, was basically a terror weapon. It was sent to frighten North America. The secret to stopping terror weapons is to make sure that nobody knows about them. So if you're on Denman Island and one of these landed, you would report it, the Air Force bomb disposal guys would take it away. Then an RCMP officer would come over with the Official Secrets Act and remind you that if you told anybody about this, it was 10 years in prison. The war was on, it was a war of national survival, and the vast majority of people have never heard of this weapon. So naturally, we're very proud to have it on display. And I must say, this particular balloon is on long-term loan from the Canadian War Museum. And, and I must thank them. Uh, for loading it to us.